Trail runners, are you hitting the trails in the morning only to dread the first few steps because of heel pain? If that sounds like you, stick around. We're gonna go over four exercises that I've found to really help with plantar fasciitis or heel pain. And the last one is the most important if you're running downhill and especially technical downhills. So most of us that have experienced heel pain have been told to rest, ice, get special socks, get special shoes, and those can work in the short term as kind of band-aids or first aids, but they don't work long term and they're not a permanent solution. There is definitely a time and place that these things can help, and that's usually within the first two to three weeks. But if you've been experiencing this for months or years, or for some of us over a decade, try these exercises instead. Our first exercise is going to be an ankle mobility drill with tension added in. And number two is gonna be a soleus calf raise with a little bit of a twist. Remember that exercises one and two need to go in order right together. Our third one addresses the big toe stiffness, so we're going to be strengthening it in flexion. And our last exercise is going to be a wide drill strengthening exercise. So we're gonna start with ankle mobility as you might have seen it before, but we're gonna add one component that's gonna make it more challenging. So as you might have seen it before, we're gonna use a wall or something flat as a target. And I want you to scoot your foot away from the wall as far as you can, such that you can touch your knee to the wall. Now, important piece here, you need to keep your heel on the ground at all times. So we're going all the way into dorsiflexion. And if you can't get this far, that's okay. Scoot your foot forward, aim for that wall, tap the wall. And we're gonna start with 10 rocks. So all the way to the end range of your ankle joint there and back. Once you've gotten 10 in, we're gonna go all the way to the end range and then hold, putting some tension into the ground like you're doing a calf raise. So you won't see my body move, but in essence, I, the intention is my foot is going like that. So push into the wall. You're pushing your toes into the ground and holding for 10 seconds. Now, if that's not challenging enough for you or you've tried this before and it doesn't seem to stick, we're gonna add some tension into this first toe joint, so your big toe joint. How I like to do that is to use something like a band. You can use a folded up sock anything that you can kind of feel under your foot. I'm gonna use this band and it's a wide flat band, folded in half. If you have some of those mini bands that people often use for clamshells, that can work too. And you're gonna fold it and put it right under your big toe joint. So again, folks with bunions, it's right under the bunion. Put just a little tiny bit of it under your big toe joint. You can use a kettlebell to help anchor it down or anything else that's heavy. And then while you're doing this exercise, I want you to focus on shoving that little corner of the band all the way through the ground. So create tension, go all the way into dorsiflexion, and then shove that band into the ground real hard. We're holding for 10 seconds and coming back. Repeat that 10 times with the band, and you should feel some good gains in dorsiflexion. And you might find that as you go through it, you're able to scoot your foot back and go either further into dorsiflexion here. So we've all seen and probably done calf raises, but you might notice it doesn't really work. And part of the reason for that is it's not hard enough. If you're used to running miles and miles on trails, your calves are probably pretty strong. So that means you need a greater challenge in order to adapt. This is one great way to do it. So this is how we typically cheat calf raises. The most common thing I see is when you go up into a calf raise, you actually come out like this. So watch where my ankles are pointing. Instead of going straight up, they go out, which means you cheat all of your big toe loading out of a calf raise. And you also turn off your side calf muscles called your peroneals. Also in traditional calf raises, there's not a lot of toe extension, which you can see when you're walking or running, you get into toe extension as you toe off. So we're gonna need toe extension to be part of your calf raises if we wanna tie it all in. Okay, so first you're gonna need a towel or a washcloth and we're gonna roll it a few times so that you get kind of this half roll here. Half of it can still be flat depending on how tall it is. And I want you to put it down such that the roll is facing down and at the edge of whatever you're stepping on, your stair step or your box. Then we're gonna use something to balance. I'm gonna use my poles. You can use a wall or a chair in front of you and step with your big toe and your little toes on the roll part of the towel. From here, you're gonna lean into your poles or your wall, use your other foot to help find neutral position here, 
And when you're ready, you're gonna raise your calf as high as you can. Again, making sure your ankle is pointed forward and down. You might be able to tell I'm already shaking. This should be pretty hard, pretty immediately. And you should feel your toes gripping the towel as you go through these. How many to do is dependent on you, but I want you to get to about 80% of your total effort. So that means your calf feels like it's about to cramp, but it doesn't go into a full cramp. Also, if you want way more information about plantar fasciitis recovery than we can cover in this video, we have a free plantar fasciitis recovery plan in the description, so click that link below. So lots of us runners have stiffness in our big toe as well. When you have stiffness in your big toe and you can't point it up towards your face, that makes it fairly impossible to run with healthy, strong arches. No soft shoe or fancy sock is gonna solve that for you. You need to do strength and mobility work at that big toe joint specifically. If you're looking down at your feet right now and you notice that you have a bunion deformity, this is extra important for you and we actually have a separate video going over some helpful tips for that. So if you've seen this exercise before, it's commonly done with a light little tiny band. We're gonna use a very thick, heavy band here. You can also use a belt. I would rather you go stiffer rather than stretchier. You're gonna take a loop of it and put it right around your big toe and tack that to the ground. Once you have it there, stand all the way up. And then your job is to pull the belt or band as tight as you can till your big toe comes up. And then you're gonna shove your big toe down and hold. Try and get at least 20 seconds per rep here or until the bottom of your foot cramps. If it cramps, you're probably doing a good job with this. You can release it, release the band tension, and then keep that rest real short, no more than 10 seconds and go again. The whole time you should be tacking your big toe down all the way into the ground. Again, you're probably gonna feel some calf work and some bottom of the foot work as well. Do a total of four sets on each side. All right, so this is our Y drill. You don't need a fancy laid out grid like this. Uh, the intention of the directions should work just fine. But if you do wanna lay something out, put something right in front of you. You can put something like a rock, a shoe, doesn't matter, right in front of you. And then to the about 45 degrees behind you on each side. So we're gonna do one leg at a time. And I want you to start by going in that diagonal back direction. So we're going to start with this leg and I want you to squat down and as far as you can reach your toe back without falling over or lifting up your heel, that's how far you're going to go. So again, go back, touch your toe, come up. And last thing I want you to focus on, this knee shouldn't be wobbling all around. This is the stability part of it. This is called knee valgus. You've probably heard about it. It's not good. So we're gonna try and keep this stance leg as stable as possible. So keeping this stable, go all the way back, touch, come up. Repeat that five times in this direction. And then we're gonna go to the front. Same thing, stance leg stays stable. You can see I have a few little wobbles. And here, we're gonna touch your toe, not your heel, that's too easy. You're gonna point your foot, touch your toe, Keep that knee stable the whole time, five times in this direction as well. And last thing, this is the real challenge point. We're gonna go behind with this leg. So obviously we're not doing any curtsies while we're trail running, but stability in the frontal plane, in this plane of motion, is really gonna help out on those technical downhills when you're trying not to eat it going off the side of the trail. So last one here, stance leg, again, stay as stable as possible. Don't let the knee collapse in. And we're going to curtsy and touch back and come back up. You can tell this is challenging for me too. If you can get five of these reps in without picking up your foot and without collapsing your knee inward, get five on this. Ideally, you're gonna do three to four sets. What determines three versus four is if you can complete those sets using good form. So if you find that you're collapsing your knee inward on set three, you're done after that set. If you still have good form in set three, you can go all the way to set four. Again, five reps per direction per leg. If you want more information about plantar fasciitis, we have tons of other videos. Check them out here.